And an interesting fact for you, rat's teeth are harder than the human's teeth. In fact, they're harder than steel. Those of you of a delicate sensibility, if you're a little bit squeamish, a little bit sensitive, you might want to look away in a minute. I'll give you a warning. I'm going to say the word footumch. For anyone that's new here, I'll give you a little bit of a tour quickly. This used to be a barn. That is a free bay cart lodge that I built. It's basically an old farm. We're in the middle of the countryside. Two shipping containers there, storage tent. I've got my storage yard from building materials. I've got my caravan there. That's what I used to live in. I've got a bore old shed there. There's a small little shed there as well. But just to summarise, we've got a bit of a rodent problem. A few weeks back, I was at the in-law sorting out a rodent problem there with rats. As soon as we got back, we had a rodent problem in here. Obviously, it is a bit of a mess. But I went to do the washing up one night and a rat ran across there and then across here. And on further investigation, there was some mice activity in there as well. They'd eaten some biscuits that Lou had brought back from France. So I did set some traps in there. But the access point, I believe, was through here where that wire was going through. So I've really blocked it off. And then yesterday I went to start the van. It didn't start and the window wipers were going. So I opened my bonnet to investigate. I found two severed wires. Apparently mice don't like peppermint oil. So I got a load of that. I put it on cotton balls and I've chucked loads of them around the van. So I done inside first, opened up the bonnet. This was in the dark, in the rain. And then there was this massive towel just there. And I was like, what the fuck is that? That is too big for a mouse. So I let the bonnet down and I went and got a stick. I opened it up again. And then a big rat jumped from there over to there. Went like that, ran the engine compartment. And then I got the traps from out of there and I set two of them underneath my van. So there is one trap there. Footunch. Medic. Medic. So I came in at three o'clock last night and I caught the first one and then I reset the trap and I've caught the second one. It's got um, chocolate in there. Now you got to understand, I don't like killing things. Especially cute little mice and stuff. But basically, I, I spent ages fixing my van to get an MOT the other week. And these little fuckers have just like done me in. So one, I need to fix my van now, if I even can, if I can trace all the wires that they've gone through. I assume it was the mice and not the rat that chewed through that, but I don't know. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm doing this. I'll tell you why. I believe that there's a stoat that lives just over here. I've seen him before, he or she, don't know the two. Uh, I've only seen him once and they eat rodents. And I believe they eat eggs as well. So I'll leave that just there. There is a kestrel that comes over it, hunts as well. There's a red kite around here somewhere. The crows, they eat stuff like that as well. I have just uh, checked underneath the van. There's no um, mice caught that's in the traps, but my offering has been taken. Both mice are gone, one egg's gone. There's another egg just there. You see, I'd rather not poison the rodents because then it's no good for anyone but I don't mind it almost being like natural. I very much doubt that I was a rat that's eating that because they resort to cannibalism as a last resort apparently. Uh, my neighbour, he's caught fox before on the camera. I haven't seen any foxes around here but it might have been a fox but I like the idea of it being a stoat. Right the little fuckers they've eaten the bait from the snap traps but they've not set them off. So I've swapped it for the electrocution trap now. I'm just underneath the wheel. And that way I can still feed it to whatever's over there eating them. Right, so I need to have a go at fixing this wiring. Hopefully I'll be able to do it because otherwise I won't have a van. I've been thinking about getting a barn cat or a farm cat. So I was just chatting to my neighbor about the flooding and everything that we've had recently. And uh, he's got a couple of cats. One's a bit of a farm cat. It doesn't particularly like people. That's the thing as well. If I get a couple of farm cats, they're gonna kill the stoat or stoats that live over there that are keeping the rodents down. But what do you do, eh? What do you do? Right, this is the ultimate bodge. I just wanna see if I can start it first of all. Um, these ones are just twisted together. And then the other one over there, I've just got a paper clip holding the wire against the fuse. Nothing. 
I'm gonna have to pull that out and have a look underneath, see what other wires they've done. Right, I think this is war. What a fucking bastard. I'm not even sure how to deal with that, to be honest. Update on snap trap kills. That one, it had snapped, but it was gone. And then I had to look round, and then I found it over here. So the only thing that was left was its head inside the actual snap trap because saying it dragged it away and then eaten the other two thirds of it or whatever. Um, so yeah, I've, I've made the offering over here, but we're gonna find out hopefully what's eating them. Footage. Medic. I've bought a trial camera. I said it right then, didn't I? <laughs> uh, off Amazon, there's a link in the description if you want one. Uh, hopefully we will find out the thing is it might be a rat it might be a stoat it might be a fox oh it requires eight aa batteries i'm gonna go inside and then i'll i'll show you where i've set it up eventually it's too cold out here and then when you turn it off Okay, it's all set up. I just strapped it to a block of oak. Okay, we've had some action yesterday. Um, I don't know exactly what, but the mice are gone. We'll turn it on. I'm gonna put up on screen the actual video, but you're gonna hear my live reaction. It's another mouse. It's not. Is it another mask? Can he eat another mask? Oh, that's a rat. Big rat. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. It's took, taking the head. It took the head. Two rats. Jesus Christ. Oh, a big boy. Okay. It's a Kestrel. Lou put the bin bag out the other night and just put it there. Left it there. For, it was probably only there about an hour. And by the time I'd come out, it had been chewed. So a rat had been up here. And then yesterday, I last night, I just done loads of washing up and I just came walking up here, just in my own mind. I got to about here and then a rat jumped at me from here, screamed at me. Ah! I don't know how it didn't get me, but it somehow it just like ran down there and it's like that, I screamed, I screamed. So I haven't got any more mouse kills. So I took the two traps that were under there, I put meat in them and then I put them underneath here. So here's the barn cat update. I've got myself some one inch by one inch, 16 gauge wire, I think that's one and a half mil. It's 30 meters there. This is gonna be the cat's home. So I'm gonna empty that, insulate it, and then I'm gonna build a shack catio with farm cats, barn cats, shed cats, shack cats. Should we call it a shack cats? <laughs> Apparently you need to keep them in for six weeks and then they know where they live. So you feed them every day. But I don't fancy just sticking them in a shed and then just closing them in there. People normally put them in crates and stuff. I just think that's out of order. So I'm just gonna build the cat shack. Cat, cat, shack, cat, yo. <laughs> um, I've got all the old wood off the barn over here. Yeah. I'm just gonna cobble something together. It's not gonna look pretty, but. I think they'll keep the mice down. The mice, are, I, I'm pretty sure the mice done my van. The mice have written my van off. I don't know whether they will keep the rats down. I think the rats just end up hiding. They're more cautious. 
So I need to kill the rats and I'm not sure how to do it because obviously they're they're crafty fuckers, aren't they? So I'm gonna review the footage and then I need to come up with another plan. No one's responded to me from the RSPCA or anything like that, but I've got a plan. I haven't done that yet because I was sorting out my van. I haven't sorted my van out yet. The rats, I'll show you a clip of here. Uh, so the snap traps don't work with the rats. They're um, too cautious and they, they just fuck off basically. So I've just bought two new traps. Right, these are from the Big Cheese. Um, you can get normal electric ones, um, but they're too small for these rats, so I had to get the big ones. Obviously, I'd rather not kill them at all, but I don't, I don't particularly want to poison them because that's an horrible way to go, isn't it? Like, okay, for this one, you put the bait there. This is a non-poisonous bait. And then there's two metal plates there. And as soon as it touches both of them, it will electrocute itself. I thought this hole might be a little bit too small for the rats I've got, but I suppose we'll have to give it a go. It says overcome neophobia. So neophobia is the um, tendency to reject new foods or not want to try them. Basically, you know, like kids don't want food. So hopefully that's going to help because it can try it and get used to it before it gets killed. If you know what I mean. <laughs> or hopefully anyway. Yeah, I opened up the bonnet. It's ripped the wood off. That was a fucking rat. More rat shit, more rat shit. I am pulling my bloody hair out. Um, the, the rats, they won't go near the snap traps. I can't get them with peanut butter. I can't get them with fucking bacon or palm ham or anything. I've tried the electrocution boxes. They won't go near them as well. They wouldn't take, they're not even interested in the bait that comes with it. Even though they didn't have to go through the electrocution thing, I just left the door open. They won't do that. I know that they eat mice, so I put a bit of lamb or is it beef on, on the trap? Not fucking interested. They won't go near any of the fucking snap traps, electrocution snap, snap traps, no, nothing. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I've just ordered a fucking gun, fucking cat food or whatever, and then they're gonna come along and I'm gonna shoot them in the fucking head. So it's the 20th of February, 2024. The cat shack is finished. I'll give you a tour of that in a second. I do have my gun as well. That's got delivered. I fixed it. Now I do have to actually put it all back together. 
but for all intents and purposes it works um, I will be spraying it with this this is an anti-rodent lacquer but it only lasts six months that's the troubling thing about it but I'll just do it anyway before I put the dash back in I have actually I put a metal plate in this bit now because a rat ripped off the wood before even though it's temporary and the rat got in and then shit everywhere oh another thing rats and mice apparently don't like strong smells so i've got loads of these peppermint balls or cotton balls with peppermint oil on them they're chucked in the van like there was loads of them rats don't give a fuck about this absolutely not because i had the trial cam underneath the van and one of the rats if i can find the video and a clip of it it had one of them cotton balls and it was trying to chew it because it thought it was food so it doesn't work on rats it might work on mice i don't know i keep on saying uh rice and mats <laughs> <laughs> uh the traps so the traps uh the electrocution ones the bait the rats don't give a fuck about that not interested at all the mice ate it when the gates was open but I've closed it now and you see the opening i worked out that this bit actually come off so i've got some big fucking rats and there was no way they was going to get through there so now they can get in there but i haven't killed any i think the rats can smell me on the uh electrocution traps and the snap traps and uh yeah they just wasn't interested so on this one over here that is no longer there because i've just shoved it over here for now it's not switched on um i covered it in fish oil I just got like a spray bottle and I also put um, sardines in it, I think it was. First thing that comes along, I'll show you the clip now. Yeah, that was fucking lucky. I watched it and I was just like, I was watching the clip back and I was like, no, don't go inside. Because I, I don't want to kill the stoat. That is the only potential predator that the rats have got at the moment. So it's lucky it didn't work. I think the fish oil must have... I see it, it kind of shorted the trap when I first done it, but I thought it'd reset and it hadn't. So lucky enough it didn't kill it. Look at the size of this fucking rat on this clip, if I find it. That is fucking massive. So it took forever for the uh, gun to get delivered. It took like three weeks, but I was going to set myself up in the shed and get a little uh, opening and just shoot them from over here. I'm getting the cats tomorrow and I've, I've only just got the gun a couple of days ago so I didn't bother doing the flap in the shed. With regards to the cats, I'm getting them from a cat charity. They're based in Buckinghamshire. Uh, so they, I'm outside of their area, but I'm just going to go and pick up the cats myself. Not uh, A lot of the people that do like the cat charities, um, they're all females and they're quite protective of the cats and what i ended up doing for that particular one i made a little short video explaining who i am a bit about me my setup here and everything and that worked hello i'm aiden i'm applying for the position of cat dad rspca they got back to me i think it was like a month late or something um the ones that were good uh battersea they was really good i had a chat with the woman on the phone and there was another couple of charities that were quite good um but yeah, obviously I'm sorted now. Let's show you the cat shack. Okay, so there we are. Uh, I thought I'd improve it a little bit because they've got you've got to keep them inside anywhere. The general advice is anywhere between two and six weeks. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm just going to play it by ear. And then I wanted them to be able to survey the area and see where they're going to be living. So I've put in this additional thing and that's their little platform their little lookout platform that way they can turn around there even though i assume they could probably turn around in and that uh yeah brace correctly i only need one though i designed this so the gate goes inwards so if they're in the shed i'll put that there like jams up against there and then if they try and get out of the cat flap or they're up on the viewing platform they can't escape around so i can sort out this this is where their litter trays are i just need to take these bricks off and then they've got their trays in there i'll put them one little jump there then they can jump on here then they can jump on there and then they can jump on here 
that's just screwed up there and then they can see all the way over there so they can see most of everything apart from where we're eventually going to be living i was thinking shall i just do like one that goes over the top onto the containers but i think that's a bit too much there's another bolt on this just keep that closed uh the cat flap oh that's the entrance to the viewing platform um the cat flap you're only supposed to have it 10 to 15 centimeters off the floor so i've put this on the cats are only five months old so they're a little bit smaller at the moment so i just thought i'd make it a little bit nicer for them or easier to get in and out Let's show you inside ta -da. we got our water fountain that's on a pir sensor so it only switches on when they go in and out or i'm walking in and out uh Lou bought this on the basis that she bet me £100 I wouldn't be able to fix my van, so she owed me. Obviously, I've run my electric in. I've taped up all of the wires. This light is on a timer, so that comes on at 5 and goes off at 9, so they've got a little bit of light in here. I put them on a little shelf so they can look out the window, maybe like see what's going on or sunbathe or whatever. Here's my infrared heating panel. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to run this at the moment. I have bought a thermostatic plug. So if it goes below a certain temperature, it switches on. I don't know whether it will work with this and whether it will stay on, but I can set this at a constant temperature and it will just heat up and turn off to stay at that temperature. Uh, but everything is insulated in here apart from the door. I did switch it on last night. Here's a picture of that. That's the reason why I've got these little cat trees so they can sit up here and be a bit warm. But this should only really be used in the winter if I need to. They've got little steps that they can get up onto their platform. That's the first platform. I've put this on there. That's solid so they can jump from here up onto that one. I've cut that one out so they can jump up. And these are like insulated polystyrene boxes there's two of them taped together and then toys training i've got these ones these have got catnip in and this this is what their job is kill all the rats and stuff rats and mice oh, i need to get them some straw for the um for the bedding as well i forgot to get that i'm gonna let the cats settle in for a few days rather than shove a camera in the face just in case they're a little bit stressed obviously they don't know me or anything um and I'll show you the cats and then I'll show you my gun as well. As far as the rats go, people say if you remove their food source, then they'll just go away. But as far as I was concerned, there was no food source around here. I did empty the shed initially that I turned into the cat shack. I had a big bag of grass seed in there, which I have now put there because there's not much left. I put it in the tent and here's a clip of what I saw. So the rats have got in there pillaged. They're probably at fuck loads of grass seed and then um yeah just shit everywhere basically and then just over here i used to have a hole where this electrical wire went in they've chewed at this and they've chewed the wire there as well and an interesting fact for you rats teeth are harder than the human's teeth in fact they're harder than steel so in theory they could get through this steel metal plate now okay gun time cat time be next promised um right so this is what i've got I've got a Crossman 2250XL, also known as a rat catcher. So yeah, this takes CO2. I am going to try some lamp in to shoot the actual rats. So that's a, like a little torch. To get them used to the actual red light, I'm going to use a red floodlight. But uh, rats, they don't actually have red cones in their eyes, if anyone can remember about rods and cones. Um, but they can still perceive the light through their rods, apparently. So yeah, we'll try red. I'm trying to avoid um, getting a night scope if I possibly can. Oh, little rats, little rats. Right, I've set myself up a little, um, this is my little, uh, I don't know, what do you call it? Something where I can see it. You might have seen on Instagram a week ago or so, I was having a little target practice, but that was without the scope. Uh, now I'm gonna set myself up there. Before I was shooting, it was only about eight meters away, I think. Um, now I'm going for 15, so it's double. 
shooting into my little trailer. Uh, 15 meters, that's about 16 and a half yards. A lot of gun people like, like, like talking in yards, but I don't. 15, 20 yards for a gun like this, maybe. So it's one at a time. I might need to change the gas on this. Put safety on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I was aiming for that one and I've gone down there, so it's low and to the right. So now I'm going to have a play with the scope settings. Right, I'm pretty much zeroed in, I'm almost there. It's a bit difficult in the dark, obviously. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. I'll set the camera up down there in a minute. Hopefully I don't shoot my camera. Okay, I'm going to shoot the right target. I'm going to leave the microphone down here. There we go, I feel it just there. Uh, so if that's the rat's head, bang. We go for a van update. I did put my dash back in. I drove it. It works, but I've got an ABS issue and what is it, the EPS? ESP. ESP. This is Liam, the man, the legend. Okay, the van is sorted. Uh, I had the wheel position center one turn out of what it should be. So Liam helped me with that. He had told me what to do on his computer and then we just swapped it around. We're gonna have a little shoot off. I've joined some rats on there. So we're gonna shoot them in the head, yeah? There we go, that's Liam. He's done it in the jugular. I've done it in the cranium just there. Right, we've had six shots each. I've shot his ear off. Liam's bang on all of them. I'm just gonna go and feed the cats. You can come with me. We might see one of them if we're lucky. They are scared. They don't particularly like me. They are feral. Failing that, we've got trail camera footage from the other night and I've got a quick clip from my phone that I took the other day. Hello. Do you want your dindins? At the, at the window. Oh, there's another one. Hello. They like me better when um, when I've got my head torch on. Hello, cats. Do you need dindins? Do you need dindins? Yeah, here we go. It's all right. Do you, you like that one there, don't you? There you go. It's yum yums. Here we go. It's din dins. There we go. I bought the cats another little tree thing. <laughs> That's a bit better. I'm gonna show you the video from mobile now. Okay, so bottom bunk. That is Tilly. She likes sleeping down there. And then on the top bunk, we've got Lily. <gasps> There's another face. That is Willie as well. So they're all siblings. Two girls, one boy, but Willie, he's a scaredy cat. He's got no balls anymore.